Let's see. So what, what, so what can I say about William Rowan Hamilton? William Rowan Hamilton is based on the uh, on the the well known and well loved Broadway play Alexander Hamilton. Uh, it's another one of those things that's very obvious. <laughs> like many people had the idea to connect uh, Hamilton, the physicist and mathematician, with the uh, Hamilton the musical because you know you learn you hear all about Hamiltonians and in. You know, here here Hamilton's name pops up all the time in like multivariate calculus and stuff, and uh, Hamilton pops up all the time in th- in classical physics, where he did a lot. He did a lot. Hamilton did a whole lot more than I get to showcase in this video. I mean, he basically invented like the action principle. Um, like it, even though it's called the Lagrangian, like Lagrange was a mathematician, but uh, Hamilton did a lot of the heavy lifting of inventing Lagrangian mechanics and Hamiltonian mechanics, even though he only got one named after him. And those are the the versions of um, classical mechanics, which is like, you know, the theory that comes out of Newton's laws that every working physicist actually uses to solve almost every problem. Like nobody uses Newton's laws because action principles are just so much easier and more efficient. Um, and uh, he, he was, you know, he was a genius. He but the thing the the story that you know we're portraying here is his discovery of quaternions. Um quaternions are a really strange thing. I still am not entirely sure I understand them. Um I under I di- I did a little side venture into uh getting into math literature the uh the a few weeks ago and read a bunch about geometric algebra which is sort of a framework that's re like reframing a lot of um, you know, complex complex numbers and and quaternions and vector calculus and trying to and and like trying to put it all in in one framework. Um, and uh, in in that uh, in that setting, quaternions are not actually like in in usual math talk. Quaternions are like vectors. Like there's there's three of them. They they live in a four dimensional space of some sort. But there's one of them. There's, a, there's like the the four the four dimensional space. One dimension is like the real numbers dimension, the usual one, and then there's an i dimension, a j dimension, and a k dimension, and uh, multi like there's a multiplication that's defined on this space, where multiplying by multiplying i by j gives you k, and multiplying by j k by j by i gives you j, and it's it's like a rotation sort of thing. Um. And that's always really confusing to me because, and and i times j times k is negative one. So it's it's like this, uh, it, it's this extension of complex numbers where i squared equals negative one, <laughs> where i squared ne- equals negative one, and j squared. Yeah, that's a line in the thing. So Hamilton was looking for a way to extend complex numbers into three dimensions, um, and the important thing he was trying to figure out was how to do multiplication because that's what makes complex numbers really useful is that you can multiply them. Like vectors are a great way to extend into any dimension, but vectors weren't really well used at the time, um, and it was like matrix algebra wasn't really well used. It, it kind of became this fight between Hamilton and the people who were really into matrix algebra, and like matrices sort of won won out in the end. But uh, there's a way of viewing quaternions in because you can see quaternions like the i j k of quaternions is like three dimensional space. You can think of um, each one as a vector. So like I is this direction, J is this direction, K is this direction. But you can also think about them as as like little planes, like planes with unit areas or something like that, where if if you've got, like you'll be familiar from, with this if you've seen cross products or like normal vectors or whatever, um, that the plane corresponding to I is the plane that it's perpendicular to, right? And so there's a plane here that's I and a plane here that's J and a plane here that's K. And I actually find that a lot easier to visualize because it when you multiply by a quaternion, what happens is that you rotate in that plane. And and the planes generally have like an orientation, like the way that uh, um the, the the way that uh the vector of uh angular momentum will have will denote an orientation of the, the circular motion of something. Um, and I actually think of that a lot simpler because if you multiply by some, by like, usually you have to use like weird cross product, product rules for rotations and, 
um, this is actually very simple. You just take a vector and you multiply it by the plane and it rotates to the other vector in the plane. And so I kind of like that description of quaternions better than the one that was classically been used. But uh, that has nothing to do with Hamilton, who drank a lot and uh, married someone he wasn't in love with. And this is his story. And also it features a lot of your favorite YouTube creators. Uh, because by this point I had gotten, uh, I had had a lot of brief chats with people and I just decided, you know what, this is an ensemble piece. I'm going to reach out to everyone I know who could conceivably do science, a science rap kind of thing and see who I can get a hold of. So you'll see a lot of people that I got to be different, uh, different scientists for this. This is like the first attempted like cinematic thing that we tried to do. Um, and I don't know if we super pulled it off, but I think we did okay. Derek. Son of a lawman in Dublin, dubbed an impressive polyglot young and wonderkind, embarrassed in a contest with the prodigious just for honor. Obtain Irish science's highest honor. Uh, so Ham that that line refers to Hamilton had was like a child prodigy in math, um, and he did this uh, this contest with Zara Colburn, who was like an American math whiz, um, and he lost. And that was one of the things that made him like. It, I don't know, made him pursue math even harder. He was like, I cannot be beaten. The math scholar, chief astronomer. Tom, Tom McFadden, if you don't know Tom McFadden, he's super, like, he's doing some super interesting stuff. He's, like, using, uh, he, he's using science rap as, like, an educational cool, tool because he works at the Nueva School in, in San Francisco. And uh, it, so he's he's always most of his videos are like they're put together by his his like eighth grade science classes and they're they're pretty well done and like i don't know it's like like teaching is learning is best done by doing and i think that's a really cool approach to education i wish more people would do that and i i don't know i wonder if there's any way that someone someone and i could put together like a platform to do that easier I should talk to him Alcoholic burned a lot stronger by working a lot longer by starting a lot younger by being a savant and by 13 knew more languages than the Holy Father. And that reference was out of date by the time I made it because I was referring to JP2, the former pope who uh, knew, like knew something like 20 languages. But of course, JP2 was not the pope when when Hamilton was live and was not the Pope by the time I did this. Every day while knaves were playing soccer Ooh. and ogling babes lost in the page, he studied and built his knowledge. At 18 had gotten a spot at Trinity Ooh. College. A brother had mathematical skills set to astonish. That's a, uh, so that's a, uh, oh, what is he, uh, Comaniti was his, his previous name, but his real name is Mike. I think he just goes by Mike Like Science now. Um, he, I, I think he was the first YouTube science rapper I ever encountered because I think he was like one of the very first people to sign on to PBS Digital Studios like way back in the day before anybody knew about them. Um, yeah. This guy, this guy is Hood Scholars. Um, goes by Hood Scholars. H o o d s k a l a s, and uh, he's like. <laughs> he's a really interesting YouTuber. I don't know if he's still posting now, um, but he was he was doing these like really, I don't know, these like really well put together, like not not great produced, but like really really well written and and implemented like science freestyles. Um, just it it was like it was I think it was more, it was mostly like high school level physics kind of stuff, um, but just like. I don't. I can't remember how I came across him, but I, I, he has like no exposure. Like nobody, nobody watches his videos, but he's so good. Came, but devastation Woo! reigned. A man saw his Catherine take another Woo! name. The depression told him ended. He fended it from his Woo! brain. Then he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. Yeah. So Hamilton, uh, Hamilton did actually. This is actually a reference to Hamilton did actually spend, like after uh, his. Catherine, who's played here by my, my friend Angie, who she and I used to have a lot of Hamilton parties where we would uh, we would sing Hamilton endlessly. Um, Hamilton actually did have, like, he had these moments af after that where he was so depressed that he would just stand, like, 
stand on a bridge and look over the edge and like consider jumping into the river and drowning. Um, yeah, unfortunately, he did not. First refrain, the testament to his pain. Will there's a, oh, this is, this is Tom. This is the same guy who, uh, who was handing me all the stuff in the last video. Wordsworth, his pal, said this verse is just okay, man. Stick to mathematics and you'll never be a lame, man. Do your calculations, stay kinetics as you claim. Yeah, um, he actually was, like, like, uh, we're, he, he kept, Hamilton was like a wannabe poet as well. And he, like, kept sending, uh, poetry to, to William Wordsworth. And Wordsworth was like, Dude, these aren't good. Um, don't, like, don't be a poet. Be a mathematician. You're really, really good at being a mathematician. And uh, that's something that I really connect to because every time I get something new, I get doing something new, I'm like, I should be this. This should be the thing I should do forever. Like, I don't know, I, I should be a bassist now or I should, I don't know. Um, like, it, it's just, it. I have things take over me really quickly. Um and people always have to tell me, like, Tim, stop. You're not uh, you're not trying to launch a line of Yonko keyboard adapters that are 3D printed or whatever. Like, go back to what you're good at. And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? William Rowan Hamilton. Hey, it's me. Whoa, what happened? Did something fall? I think I dropped something. Oh well. Hey, look at me. Do I look like uh, do I look like Lynn Manuel? My name is William Rowan Hamilton. We found this bridge. This was like we we just Google searched bridges in Montreal and eventually like it took us quite a while but we found this like little bridge in a park that just happened to be uh the right um I don't know to look right cuz we want like the 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 Broom Bridge in uh wait, where is it? It's it's in uh Ireland somewhere. But um the Broom Bridge is like it's like kind of arched like this and we needed something that like you could walk along a path and like realize something and then like carve it into the bridge. I don't know if he was walking along, along underneath the bridge or like over the top of it. We decided to do it underneath. It's a better shot. And no one uses my quaternions, but just you wait. Just you wait. He tried extending the so this, is, this is Helen Arney. Helen Arney was, I, I mentioned her when we were talking about uh, de defining gravity because She's the one who had she she's a uh, she's on the festival of the spoken nerd along with Matt Parker, um, and she does like her thing is is like science songs and and science parody songs and stuff as well, and so she uh, she had this version of defining gravity that she was doing for ages, um, and I didn't know about it. And then after I published mine, she told me. <laughs> so we got talking, and I was like, well, how about you be in another video of mine? So she's Emmy Nurter here. Um, who are these? All these people. Um, they're, so, uh, let's see. Derek is. Derek is supposed to be Arthur Cayley, who was a who was a, like a contemporary mathematician. Um, Lagrange also a contemporary mathematician, um, inventor of Lagrange of Lagrangians and in, sort of in the calculus domain, um, that led to Lagrangian mechanics. Um, the Tom, uh, Tom, or let's see, um, Euler, another contemporary mathematician, had a like, you you find Euler everywhere. I mean, like the the that formula e to the i pi equals negative one is called Euler's formula. But like, you can't you can't go you can't throw a stone in a math department without hitting something that Euler did. Um, Brinkley, I I think he was just he was like a good friend of Hamilton, but he's not. A, I don't think he's a famous. Um, scientist. I think I just needed a character for him. And then William Wordsworth. Uh, let's just go ahead. So Emmy Noether, um, one of the great, sh she invented one of the great pieces of physics of all time, this thing called Noether's theorem, which, which connects, uh, connects symmetries of a theory to conserved quantities. So, and, and she used Hamiltonian mechanics to do it. Um, but her, like, so if you ever wonder why things are conserved in physics, like people talk about energy conservation um, or momentum conservation, and you're like, why? Why is that thing conserved? Um, the reason why stems from Noether's theorem, and it's, it's al there's always the symmetry between symmetries, particularly continu continuous symmetries, and uh, conserved quantities. So a continu continuous symmetry is something like... Um, uh, time symmetry. So whatever time you're at 
the the laws of physics are the same. The past is like the future. There's no there's no difference between being now and being later. Um, position symmetry is you know there's no difference in the laws of physics between being here and being over there. And t so time translation symmetry maps on directly to um, energy conservation, and position symmetry maps on direct direct or like directly implies um, momentum conservation. So you've got three three directions of momentum that are conserved corresponding to three dimensions of, of space that you're symmetrical in. And then uh, angular momentum conservation. So if you spin something, it's angular momentum, like, like spinning momentum is conserved. That comes from the rotation symmetry of the laws of physics, where you, uh, if, if you have something like this, in the absence of gravity, if you have something this way, it's the same as having it that way. Um, that's that is such a fundamental part of physics and is used in absolutely everything um that uh, i've been trying to figure out a way to do like a specific noter or noter theorem song for quite a long time but i haven't figured it out yet these are just a, a some a twin the twin daughters of a friend can you multiply triples not yet I can only subtract That's my sister. Play, playing my wife, which is a little bit weird. <laughs> I needed someone. And there's Simon Clark. You'll probably recognize Simon Clark. He's got to... Uh, I, 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 every, everyone sort of... I tried to put something in back of each of them that was kind of consistent with who they were. At least the ones who shot on green screens. Like uh, Hood Skull is just shot on a brick wall, so I did that. Um, these are airy discs coming out of John Air of George Airy here. Um, th these uh, these fringe patterns from uh, from shining coherent light. Um, this this is this is actually what you would see if you could see inside the LIGO detector when we were talking when we were watching LIGO and talking about the bright and dark bands and how they would move. Um, you'll see uh, you, you'll you'll see the uh, like as, as a gravitational wave goes by, you'll see these little fringes go back and forth. And Aries is the per first person to have discovered that. So he's he's talking about light because uh, it made sense. So so the thing is, what what Hamilton did with the least action principle of um, uh, a Bowser. I don't understand why one line is whispered. It's just because uh, it is in the original, um, and. and uh, it doesn't work as well them thematically as the original, but it is kind of like it is kind of like a dirty little secret to marry someone you don't really like. Um, but that's what Hamilton did. He ended up mar mar marrying um, this lady Helen, who who he called like like a functional partner, but he was always pining after this uh, um, Catherine Catherine Disney, I believe her name was. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, he'd an oh yeah, so what I was going to say about light is that there's there's the simplest version of the least action principle, which is what leads to, to Hamiltonian and Lagrangian mechanics, is the fact that light always takes the shortest, uh, the light always takes the, the fastest path to its target. Um, so if you've got a light, if you've got a light beam, um, and you and you know the starting point and the ending point, and it's going through some complicated medium that, like, say, you, say you've got like a pane of glass. So um, the 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 light will hit the pane of glass and then deflect, and then when it gets out of the glass, it'll undeflect. And and if you if you take like the starting point and ending point of that beam of light, and you look at you ask which path is it going to take, the answer is it's exactly the path that minimizes the time it takes to get there. Um, so the the light will bend in the so it's like in a in the same medium that I did a science that's a good shirt yeah I think that's a, a Joe Hansen shirt um, if if the optical properties of the medium don't change then that's just going to be a straight line from one point to the next that's the fastest point but if you're going through some to something like glass where the speed of light changes it's actually figuring out what exactly which path will optimize between shortness of path and length of and length of time spent in that medium where you're going slower um so for light action is so 
everything has a principle like that. This this is an alternate way of seeing the laws of physics, where it's trying to minimize something. And for light, that's the time it takes. Um, but for objects, it's this more complicated. Uh, like like for massive objects, it's this more complicated thing called action, which is essentially um, like an adding up over time of all the instantaneous. Um, pos- uh, kinetic energy minus potential energy of of the object and it's really it's really kind of bizarre when you first see it that like newton's laws which are all about forces have this completely alternate description in terms of like minimizing this bizarre integrated object it's really unintuitive but then when you go level deeper into quantum mechanics you realize that actually it's the action part it's the action principle that's fundamental um in quantum mechanics, you realize that the path of an object is like it, it's an approximation of the wave function of the object. And the wave function of the object is, is it's like centered around this path of least action, but it also like spreads out around it. Um, and so if you just zoom out so far that you can't see the wave, the wave function, you just think of it as a path, then you end up with the action principle again. And that leads you to an alternate formulation of that, which is Newton's laws. So it's like we discovered the whole thing backwards, which is often how physics works. We're, we're digging down into the more fundamental. Hank went so hard on this. I loved it. I, di- I didn't know if Hank was going to respond. Um, he had already, I'd never met him at this point. I think he had actually done a podcast with me. Um, but you know, I, I'm always very hesitant to, to like email people who are super busy and, you know, are running VidCon or whatever and ask them to do something for my channel. But, uh, you know, Hank got the, he got the costume and he just, he just went ham on it. Slink into his office, getting ripped, roared, turning back to triplet manipulation with no reward. Yeah, so in the meantime, while while Hamilton was was doing all his Hamiltonian mechanics stuff, he was trying to solve this quaternion problem. Um, so tr- turning back to triplet manipulation with no reward. It was kind of this through line where he, he kept, like, while he was doing all his other stuff, he kept going back to this, like, Daddy, can you multiply triples? His fa- His daughters would say every day, and... Hamilton would respond every day, not yet, I can't. I haven't figured it out. Um, this is Baba Brinkman, who is who does a, a lot of science raps. He, he's focused, back in the day he was doing more YouTube videos, now he's focused more on live shows. Um, so he's got like a rap guide to climate chaos and a rap guide to consciousness, and these are like um, stage shows that he puts on. Um, but f- fantastic lyricist, and I was happy to have him. And Jacoby is another math, uh, contemporary mathematician. I, I really liked what he does there with his fingers. So you can see all the like it's weird to sing to a camera. You can see all the different takes, like ways that people go about it. My sister is very is very earnest. Tom is like kind of bored whenever he's not actually singing. Uh, Simon Clark looks fine because Simon is always uh, Simon is, is like the most charming person. Your energy function generates the flow of time. Yeah, um, that is it's a. Oh, that that's referring that's referring to the Hamiltonian. So the other thing about Hamiltonian mechanics is there's there's it Lagrangian mechanics all works with actions, but Hamiltonian mechanics works with the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is just like the overall energy of the system. Like whatever energy you have in in potential, like in like in in gravity fields or whatever, 
and what energy you have in, in kinetics and motion. Um, you add all that up together, and that is, uh, that, that's your Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian in... There, there's a way that this is true in classical mechanics, but the Hamiltonian really shines in quantum mechanics, where it's actually the object that acts upon the uh, like your quantum state and evolves it forward to the next moment in time. Um, so, so a quantum state will always evolve like at a rate dependent on how energetic that state is. That's basically what it means. Um, and the way to do that all that all at once for like all the states of all different energies all at the same time, if there's a bunch of them superposed, is to just act on them with the Hamiltonian, which is the overall energy of the system. Whoops. But you'll do that all that automatic automatically. So your energy function generates the flow of time. No also, 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 this like this moment that that time in when I started listening to Hamilton, like Hamilton's the the musical is is fantastic, but it starts off kind of slow, and I I don't think I was really sold on it. I was like, what what is this thing? This people these people like rapping about uh, you know about this founding father of the United States. Like, is this really going to work? And then it's, it's when like that build up starts in this song and, and you get to, you get to this chorus. Um, th and especially that time that, that was what the moment that sold it for me. I was like, okay, this is, this is worth it. Let's keep going. And then Hamilton just keeps getting better after its opening song. <laughs> That's a that's a, a weird, pretty pretty technical line. Uh, for it is that Lee commute with the symbol that bears your name, hold their own and oppose the grain. Um, so what that means, that's referring again. It's it's not actually that complicated. Um, it's referring to the fact that um, in quantum mechanics, there's there's sort of a, a sidedness to multiplication. Um, when you're like if you're familiar with with vector calculus, you'll be familiar with the fact that multiplying something on the left, so A times B can be different than B times A, um, which is, it's like if you wrote, if if you do this rotation and this rotation, it's different from doing this rotation and then this rotation, it gives you a different thing. Um, and so when you're acting on a state with the Hamiltonian to evolve it forward in time, you act on it from the left. And if it's, if you, if it's on the right, it doesn't really do anything. Um, but commuting is for that property to hold the commutative property of multiplication, right? Um, that you can you can have a times b and b times a, and it's the same thing. So any state that commutes with the Hamiltonian, essentially, what happens is the Hamiltonian passes right. This is like mathy, like writing on the blackboard jargon that I don't know if it makes any sense. But the Hamiltonian essentially passes right through it and leaves it untouched, and that corresponds to um, uh, like conserve like quantity like things that are conserved over time. So if it's like a quantum state, it means that you've got a state that doesn't change with time. It has a fixed energy and it just does what it does and doesn't evolve at all. Um, see you, Melissa. Um, and uh, if it's an if it's another object or or like um, like property of the system, like for example, momentum commutes with the with the Hamiltonian. In quantum mechanics, and that mean that's what generates momentum conservation from a quantum mechanical standpoint. Um, so operators that lead commute with a symbol that bears your name hold their own and oppose the grain. Conserved, they'll always stay the same. Oh, math! Um, is that Raphael? I can't see your your uh, your avatar, so I'm not sure if that's Raphael or the other person who has Hebrew letters as a name. But uh, you're saying that the Maccabees also did a version of. William Rowan Hamilton. I think I might have saw that at one point. I don't remember it at all, so I'll have to go and look at that afterwards. Um, but the Maccabees are great, and one of my inspirations for this whole channel. Versers are uh, the 
So quaternions in quaternions, the basic objects are are like the u like the regular numbers, which are generated by the unit one, and then the three other units are i, j, and k. And so you've got these four dimensions um, based on these four unit vectors. The versors are just the um, like the sort of imaginary parts. So the i and the j and the k form like a three dimensional um, a, a three dimensional space, and uh, the, you can sort of forget about the the real dimension and just work in that three dimensional space, and that's uh, really useful for a lot of things. But those are called versors. Um, they get a lot of use in um, computer graphics these days because of a thing called gimbal lock that happens if you work in, with other systems of generating three D rotations. And quaternions are free of this problem, so they they get a good use. Yeah, so he actually did it. Like this was the first invention of vectors. Um, was it was these quaternions? Um, but then uh, pe people expanded on vectors and took them in a different direction. And Hamilton actually got in a bunch of fights over whether you should use vector calculus or quaternion calculus to do physics. Grounded him. Me, I counseled him. Me, I worked with him. We revamped him. And me, I adapted him for quantum. Just you wait. I love that chord, that diminished chord. I don't know. I'm I'm a real fan of diminished chords these days. Is that a diminished chord? It's almost a diminished chord. It would be if if the. I was flat. What's your name, man? William Rowan Hamilton. There you go. That's a... Yeah. Hey, musical scientist. Thanks. Did I, did I have a... Should we watch the end screen on this? There was, this was still before the modern end screen, I guess, because I had all these people, that, that my different contributors, off here. An acapella science production. Oh, I, I did credits. We're waiting so patiently for this collaboration to come out. I hope it would... I, I, like... I really feel like one of the things that made me really want to do Hamilton was like I knew that st I knew his story from a long time. No, it's it's not half diminished. It's just a minor. It's just a minor with a six. Um, do, 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 do. Oh no, but it's it's do 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 do. I don't know. It's it's some extended chord. Um, and um, yeah, I like I really wanted to do it was this. Worth it. If you'd like uh, to learn, learn more about the. The, the the story of William Rowan, Ham Rowan Hamilton because it's it's one of those like it's such a human story you know it's like a person who was a genius but also had like demons and flaws and had parts of his life that he never reconciled with um, and like like tragedies and troubles and I don't know it was just like it it's it's easy to have a very rosy view of of I don't know people and or just like ab abstract them to their I don't know to their contributions to physics or science or whatever and uh, I don't know I, I think it's it's cool to realize that like you can be depressed and uh, you know s struggling with substances and feel like you missed your ch shot at love and you can still like you can you can still do incredible things and also, the people who do incredible things can have all those problems. Like, it's just, there's there's a complexity to humanity, you know? We contain multitudes. The tragic genius of William Rowan Hamilton, I've put a link in the description below to a short biography. He really is one of the unsung heroes of physics. I have to give a huge thanks to the friends, family, and all the science yeah, YouTubers who took time out of their schedules to make this project. Uh, this is, I think here, I, I, I gave Derek... I put one of Derek's songs to link. Did, did you guys know that Ver, that Derek from Veritasium did songs? Um, you should, because they're <laughs> really amusing. It happened. You can check out all their channels right there. And of course, a huge shout out to Lin-Manuel Miranda, the genius himself, for creating the best musical of the 21st century. If you haven't heard Hamilton yet, do that. <laughs> Comment down below what topics you think I should cover next. Please. <laughs> Unsung no longer. Yeah, I guess so. Subscribe if you haven't, and if you've got any extra cash lying around, please consider supporting me on Patreon. These plug, 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 plug. videos take an immense amount of time, and it's only yeah. I'm I'm getting a lot, I'm getting quite a bit more natural, I think here.
only through your generosity that I'm able to keep making them. So if you feel like helping me out, it's patreon.com slash acapella science. Thank you so much to all my current patrons who heard this song almost a month ago. Love you. Yeah, this is, by this point, I was starting to get real delayed with the... Uh, the, the songs versus the videos, which is a trend that only got worse over time. For example, my patrons have had, uh, have had the new QFT, QFT song for like since October, I think. Love you all. I'll see you again real soon. Until then, my name is Tim Blay, and you're watching Acapella Science. Acapella Science. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Once again, I think, I think I'm going to cut these end screens from future videos. I think I'm going to have just a... No talking, just a really clean song. Thing ends, acapella science, boo -doo -doo -doo, links, and then uh, not speak. I like that better. And then people can watch it on a playlist and not have to hear me talk. <laughs> oh, and then, th then there's this inside joke. Pardon me, are you Schrodinger, sir? That depends who's looking. Oh, sure, <laughs> sir. I know you're not. It's what, what is another one of those just uh, quick, quick inside jokes. Uh, Riffing off of Aaron Burser from the the second song in Hamilton. People have asked me whether I should whether I'm gonna do uh, Schrodinger, sir. The answer is no because I have no I have no story to go with it. Like there's, it could I guess it could it could be something about like the Copenhagen conversations um, between. But I don't were those with Schrodinger? It was Bohr and no, it was Bohr and Heisenberg. I think who had the, the like. I'm sure there's some conversation about quantum mechanics that you could do Schrodinger, sir, but it's not it's not necessarily super interesting to me. Like the best part of it was just to have that that joke at the end, have something to end it on, and uh, you know there it is. Um, was there anything else I wanted to say about Hamilton? I want oh I wanted to say that my my patrons recently pointed out that uh, William Rowan, uh, what's your name, man? William Rowan Hamilton got into a, uh, a set of classical mechanics notes by the great David Tong, who does a lot of great uh, uh, physics notes and always puts them up for free on the internet for anyone to, to use, and they're always super helpful. And they, the, I, I can't remember who it was, but someone on the Discord asked me, uh, hey, did, did this come from you or did he think it up individually? And I went and emailed him, and it turns out that he, he, he emailed me back and said, I thought it had come from me. And I had thought of it myself, which would be totally plausible. But he also said, now that I think about it, I've definitely seen your video. So it's quite possible that the, that reference in David Tong's notes comes from good old, good old us, acapella science. Um, we're going to do, what are we going to do?